What is up, players? It is Warboss Tay up in his mug doing a little showcase video of an assault marine that I just finished painting. This is not really for a client. It's not for myself. It is for a patron of mine on Patreon. Some of you may know that I've got a Patreon page. I'm trying to gain uh, some supporters and some backers there. And one of the perks, I guess, of coming in at the $15 a month level is that I offer to paint up and ship to you at no cost a space marine done however you want, uh, within limit of course. I can't do like a Centurion or, or a bike or, or something expensive, but I do have a lot of frames of Space Marines lying around and I thought, you know, if, if I'm not going to build my Astral Claws army the way that I want to, that, that I had originally planned all these years ago, then uh, might as well kind of give back to my supporters. So. This is a Space Marine from the Blood Angels chapter, an Assault Marine, and the client, or the patron, requested that I do him as a member of the first squad in the third company. So after doing a lot of research online and figuring out how to correctly do their iconography and their heraldry, this is the interpretation I came up with. It is, I think, pretty accurate and I think it's pretty cool. So let me tell you a little bit about the build first and then I'll tell you about the fluff behind the model, the character, who is behind the mask, and uh, I think that, or I hope that my patron is very pleased because I know that I am. So I guess the first thing you can notice is that he's armed with a jump pack, a lightning claw, and a plasma gun. This is by the request of the patron. And so I think the plasma gun and the lightning claw are both from the Space Marine character kits, the character box, commander kit. And uh, the most of the rest of him, like the, the torso piece, the legs, and the jetpack are from the Death Company box. Now with Death Company, you want to be careful because the Death Company is kind of identified away from the rest of the Blood Angels because of the crossed X's. So if you look at any of the kits that have, or any of the bits of the Death Company kit, a lot of them will have like an X that you're supposed to paint in red. The rest of the armor is supposed to be in black or they have like rope tied across the legs in an X. And um, it's basically supposed to symbolize that those blood angels have been marked for death company. So you don't want to have those if you're building just a regular blood angel guy. Now, okay, thank you. Now, when you're painting your uh, blood angel, the, um, I guess the blood droplets that you see on the armor, it's really easy to go with the I guess uh, the, the easiest way to go would be to make them red. But I found that when you paint red droplets against red armor, it kind of gets washed out. And the Games Workshop Heavy Metal team thought the same thing. So they went with purple droplets along with purple wax for their purity seals. And I think it looks great. So that's what I decided to do. And I think it looks pretty, pretty good. The model is um, decorated by the Blood Angel symbol on the left shoulder pad. That's from the Space Marine Transfer Kit, as well as the uh, the way to mark identify squads in the Blood Angels chapter. They kind of go a little bit off codex by identifying their squads on their right knee pads. So this guy's got a white skull against the black background, so that marks him out as a member of the first squad. You can find this online, or uh, just look through your Blood Angels codex, I guess, as well. The company marks are on the right shoulder pad. Now for this guy, the third company, they're the ones that Captain uh, Tycho came from, if you know that special character. He, uh, well we'll talk about him later, but the third company is marked by a white blood drop on the, uh, against the red background. And so there aren't any white drops of blood on the, on the transfer sheet. They don't have white droplet symbols, but what they do have is yellow drop symbols. So what I did was I cut it out and I, after putting it on the model, I just painted it white, but I, I didn't want to go with the straight white. I thought the straight white might be too shocking. So I used Vallejo's Deck Tan. You can also use Games Workshop's Pallid Witch Flesh or Othuan Gray. Those are nice off-white colors that are not gonna be too, too glaring and shocking to the eye. What I did use red for, to decorate the model was Tamiya Clear Red I used as blood in the vials on the model. No no idea why Games Workshop decided one of their design aesthetic for their their kits was to be these, just have them decorated with vials of blood, uh, probably symbolic or um, for, you know, as, as just badges of honor and stuff. But 
uh, I decided that I, I would make that red because it wouldn't make sense to make those purple. So I just went with Tamiya Clear Red and then I put some art coat on the top to give it that glistening look. Now the character is a marine that I named Niccolo Damiani and it's kind of Italian sounding and uh, that's because I think most of the the look and the uh, I guess the feel for for a lot of the Blood Angel stuff is is very very Italian reminiscent of uh, of the Renaissance and and all that kind of stuff so uh, his history is that before Mephiston was the chief librarian of the Blood Angels there was a librarian named Leonardi da Vicenzo and he was like the chief librarian or one of the up, upper higher upper librarians and he picked this guy out uh, for training to be chosen as a as a as a blood angel because um, he saw great things in his future and so throughout his training this this boy Niccolo uh, Damiani was very uh, weak frail and um, it, it was it wasn't I guess it wasn't guaranteed that he would make it through the trials to become a space marine. This is hundreds and hundreds of years ago. This is one of the older space marines in the chapter now. But uh, through his training, he was able to succeed and with the mentorship of, of that librarian. He didn't have psychic powers, but what he did have was a great uh, skill. He had great skill at creating art and um, artful creations and on the back of his prayer books or in the margins he would use the charcoal from the fire in his cell to make sketches of uh, Baal or the space marines and um, very very lifelike he would also create really intricate looking pieces of art and working models and stuff with moving pieces from uh, things that he could find in his training so a lot of people thought oh he was very very good he could be a good artificer if he makes it and then when he does, uh, when he does become a space marine, um, he starts decorating his armor. He's he becomes known as one of the greater artificers in the chapter. And uh, some of you might know where this is leading. But when Captain Tycho of the Third Company fell to this psychic attack on the Second Battle for Armageddon, he um, he decided to decorate his face with a mask made out of pure gold. But uh, it says in his fluff that he went to one of the greatest artificers in the chapter and he asked him to create this mask. And I decided that this would be that artificer. It doesn't say who it is or, or it doesn't say anything about him, but I decided why not make him from Tycho's own company and why not make this unnamed marine uh, decorate him and give him, give him a name and give him a history. So this is him and uh, uh, just to show off some of his badges and marks of honor, I put here in front, uh, in the front of his his uh, left shoulder pad. There's some freehand writing. There's also some freehand writing on the right of his jetpack, on the top of his jetpack over here on the left turbine. There you can see it, and uh, there on his right leg. And all that is is basically different accounts of this marine's uh, history, his story, what he has accomplished. The uh, I wrote down the, <laughs> or, or in my head, I imagine that the free hand on the front of his left shoulder pad is actually the dream that Captain Tycho uh, had when trying to figure out who was going to make this mask for him. And, uh, and and it pointed him to Damiani, so Damiani was so honored he recounted the dream over there in freehand. There's also accounts of honor, honorous deeds he's done, the different battles he's been in. Uh, basically just a really cool model to work on. I love being able to flex my creativity and to just give back to my supporters. So uh, like I said, this is a this is for a patron who came in at the $15 level and my Patreon site. I'm super thankful for that. And uh, thank you guys for sitting through this video. Hopefully it gave you some inspiration because I am always excited to hear about my subscribers or my viewers who watch one of my videos and say, that's awesome. I want to do that. And they go off and they, they create their own, I guess, cre <laughs> creation and their, uh, their own stories for their models. So, if you have done something like that, I'd love to hear about it. Put it in the comments below or even better, post your work on my Google group. I'll leave a link in the description and show me your models, tell me their stories. And I think that's one of the things that makes games like Warhammer really, uh, or 40K really stand out from games where all the heroes and their histories and everything is already written. You can really just go and 
and create your own stories. Like Malifaux, everyone has a history and it's explained why they're why they are the way they are but in in a game like 40k you have a troop like this assault marine veteran and you have his stats and you have his abilities and his skills but it's up to you to make his story make his uh make his history write his uh, write all of his accomplishments and stuff i think that's really cool all right thanks for watching everybody hope you enjoyed this video if you'd like to support me you can check out my patreon as well and uh we will see you in the next one laters